The housing bubble in Canada has finally burst. The MLS house price index is currently down 9% from its peak in last February, on its way to a loss of over 30%, which we believe is consistent with deteriorating affordability and the Bank of Canada's aggressive tightening of monetary policy. According to the projections made by financial experts, the adverse wealth effect brought on by such a price decline will reduce GDP growth by almost 2.5 percentage points. It's not hard to understand why Canada's upcoming recession could be deeper than what Bay Street people are anticipating when you consider the diminishing effects of higher interest rates on consumption as well as investments. People spend more when the value of their assets such as stocks and home increases because they believe their financial situation is improving. This happens through a variety of pathways, including a behavioral element that results in people spending more of one's earned disposable income and a rise in credit access, a cycle that has predominated over the previous 10 or more years despite continuously low borrowing prices. Homeowners are more likely to take on additional debt if their credit ratings rise as they make their mortgage payments on time. The Bank of Canada's overnight target rate has increased by 350 basis points since March and is still increasing, and therefore the theme of rising wealth is certain to disappear as credit availability becomes more difficult to get and real estate values decline. Since its highest in February, the MLS Home Price Index has already dropped by 9%, but the corrective measure is still far from finished. The homeowners in Canada are being bombarded with a variety of limitations as the economy is heading into a recession such as sudden and rapid restrictions on their access to credit, all-time high debt servicing costs as well as the ongoing inflation eating up most of our disposable income. On top of that, the Canadian residents are also being hit by the inevitable wealth depletion in both equity and residential markets, which is in turn putting an extra pressure towards their sentiments. Talking about the last time when all these factors were at play in Canada was in the early 1990s, when Bank of Canada themselves induced a recession in Canada which led to a reduction in the residential property prices by almost 30 percent from their all-time high between 1989 to 1996. However, this housing washout is just getting started. Even though the household consumption is bound to slow down very soon, the wealth effect will also contribute negatively to the Canadian economy. By this what I mean to say is that if the home prices fall more than 30% from the peak then it would also lead to a fall of about 5% in the consumption, which is based on an estimate done by the central bank. This whole outcome will roughly hit the annual GDP by about 2.5%. Let's assume we go with the Canada Mortgage and Housing Corp who claim that the effect will not be that powerful but only a 15% fall from the peak but nevertheless, the GDP would still be hit by around 1.3% which is yet quite significant. And we haven't even considered the deleveraging effects of higher interest rates on consumption and investment and if we do end up considering them, it will further impact the overall economy and make the situation even worse. And as we know that the Bank of Canada is not going to stop with its never-ending interest rate hikes anytime soon, this will further induce negative wealth in the Canadian housing sector. And if you guys think all this will be over very soon, you're wrong because this is just the beginning. This upcoming recession in Canada is likely going to be heavier than what many Bay Street experts are expecting. Because of the escalating decline in home values and the multiplier effects on general consumers, there's no other way to say that the Canadian dollar is destined to continue to be weak for many more months and quarters to come. This is true not only because of the bear market in commodities but also because of the serious consequences surrounding the economic outlook. Amid the upcoming recession, a lot of Canadians who have turned themselves towards a heavy usage of credit cards, are also at a greater risk of drowning into financial hardship. Before the financial crisis of 2008 to 2009, Canadians owed $1.52 for every dollar of their disposable income. This ratio however has subsequently increased to $1.82 as of 2022 per Statistics Canada's latest data. This is the reason why a lot of Canadians are relying on credit cards to make ends meet which is why some financial experts are cautioning Canadians about a possible increase in credit card defaults that they will be obligated to pay off given these times of economic uncertainty. Under this scenario, as explained by Yanhu Galaxy, the chief executive officer of Credit Counseling Canada, Canadians usually go from paying their credit cards in full, to the minimum payments, and eventually no payments at all. As per Yanhook, 
the consumer debt picture this time is a whole lot different than the 2008 crisis because Canadians are not only fighting with an economic collapse but also the sky-high inflation, supply chain issues and a failed recovery from the pandemic. According to Equifax Canada, the use of credit cards in Canada has climbed for six consecutive quarters as of October 2022. Their research also revealed that since the end of September, credit card balances had reached a record high of $2,121 while the average consumer's total non-mortgage debt stood at $21,188. Currently, the top two financial concerns for Canadians are the cost of living and the never-ending increasing debt. According to one economist, how many jobs are lost in the case of a recession will determine the likelihood that consumer debt will collapse. The Canadian consumers are being sandwiched between sky-high inflation and paying down massive debt that they accumulated over the last 10 years when the interest rates were extremely low. In such a scenario, it's very likely that a household of two people will not survive the debt trap if one member of the household loses their income. As per Pedro Antunes, the economist for the Conference Board of Canada, quote unquote if the focus of the last recession was mortgage defaults, this time around consumer debt defaults would likely be the first to crack in a coming recession. Canadians have larger mortgage debt now than they did before the 2008 to 2009 crisis, as the prices of homes throughout the country have skyrocketed. It's for this reason that servicing mortgage debt has become their first priority, he added. If folks are going to default on payments it will be credit cards instead of mortgages because at the moment it is the lesser of the two evils, he said. Talking about the recession effect on Canadians, the pain won't be distributed equally among Canadian business and households as indicated by RBC economists Nathan Jansen and Claire Fan. As per them, the manufacturing sector will likely be among the first to pull back, while some high-contact service sectors like travel and hospitality could prove more resilient than in a normal historical recession the Bank of Canada has been hiking its key interest rate since March after it fell to a low of 0.25% during the COVID-19 pandemic. Because of this and sky-high inflation, the purchasing power of an average household is being expected to trim by almost $3,000, which is a very big number. The unemployment rate will rise from a low of 4.9% in June and July to 7% by the end of 2023, according to some RBC financial experts. Because of this, the Canadian health sector is also left untouched. A huge number of 5 million Canadians do not have access to primary care providers. Shortage of staff across Canada is leading to routine closures of emergency health departments. We already had a glimpse of this havoc on the health system during the initial times of the pandemic, but the truth is that the cracks were already visible in the system long before we were hit with COVID-19. The number of health professionals who have devoted their careers to serving Canadians are rapidly declining due to burnout and exhaustion at work. These are the times when it's a moral duty of the federal and provincial governments to intervene into the situation and propose effective solutions to provide them some hope for a well-maintained system because the health system is something we all need and deserve. So now the question comes out to be that how can we prepare ourselves for this recession? It all comes down to a couple things that you will have to stick to until everything cools down to normal. The first thing you need to focus on is cutting down your expenses. Keep your grocery bills and other unavoidable expenses as low as possible and try to stay away from making big purchases like a home or a car. Secondly, you can start looking for more ways to earn and possibly open up a side hustle that can help you take care of some of your expenses. There are a variety of options available out there that you can try for a secondary income. Thirdly, you need to focus on paying down your debt as much as you can possibly afford because as I mentioned earlier, the inflation is going to make situation worse and people who are going to be initially impacted by this will be the people with high debt. So, try to pay it down as much as you can. Fourthly, saving more in cash could eventually help you better manage your finances because when every other asset is falling in price, sometimes cash could be the safest way to store your wealth. And a lot of people may not know but cash came out to be the best performing asset in 2018 when everything else was low. And yes, you can still continue investing but try to only stick to long-term stocks or else high-yield savings account. And last but not least, try staying at your current job even though you don't like working there because the situation is going to be a whole lot worse than we can imagine. The unemployment rate is at an all-time high and the likelihood of getting into a higher-paying job is very low right now. 
So, if your current job is helping you manage your finances, just postpone your plans for a new position to a later date for now. Alright guys, if you do like this video, make sure to hit the thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. And let me know in the comments below on what else do you think is contributing to the upcoming recession and what you guys are currently doing to tackle it. See you again with another interesting topic. Till then, peace.